Hello, Sean from AED here. Today we're going to go over how to do data logging for me when you're logging your vehicle yourself for email tuning. I have LiveLink 6.5 up. I prefer to review data logs in 6.5, but you need to make sure that you're recording in LiveLink Gen 2. That is the proper LiveLink software to use for the Copperhead vehicles. You can review in 6.5, review in either one, you can open up open up the save data logs in either software, it's not a big deal, I just prefer to look at it here. So right here we have a data log from a vehicle that was on the dyno, so this is a data log that I did. I have RPM selected over here, you can click on it to highlight or deselect it to change the colors. <clears throat> this is um, at idle, I warmed up the vehicle, hit first gear, second gear, third, fourth, and then fifth. So this is a part throttle sweep. It's the part throttle sweep that I require and it's in the logging document that I hand out to customers. Down here is the idle portion uh, for a few moment, few minutes and then over here is the wide open throttle portion. How to do the part throttle pull. If you're on a chassis dyno with an MT-82 use fifth gear for part throttle and wide open. That is the one to one gear ratio. If you've got a automatic 13 and 14 select shift use select shift use fourth gear make sure that the converter is locked by waiting a moment before you go wide open throttle um, in the 11 and 12s you cannot use they have no select shift you can't use fourth gear you you only have the option of third if you're on the street please be safe try not to get in any trouble or hurt anybody that's why we recommend using a chassis dyno if you want to rent a chassis dyno that's the best way. It's, it's why we have a chassis dyno to do logs in a safe environment. But if you're going to do them on the street, you can use third gear in both the A6 and the M6s. Third gear for the part throttle, third gear for the wide open. So here, <clears throat> if you look at RPM, I'm at 900 RPM and I start the pull very slowly. I'm going to trace throttle angle as well. You'll watch throttle angle slightly increase. I'm using very light throttle. The load is low as well up here and we're just using just as much throttle as necessary to accelerate the vehicle and get a nice smooth data for the MAF curve. The goal here is to dial in the MAF curve in the tune. So if you look down here I start at 900 and I have data from about 2.1, 2.2 Hertz all the way up to 5000 RPM where I'm at 4.8. Now that is this section of the MAF curve 2.2 to 4.8. So that part throttle pull gives me data to dial in this portion of the MAF curve. It's worth noting that if you do the part throttle log incorrectly we will not get complete data. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. This is the RPM trace as well and it starts out at 1300 RPM and then we have a hiccup here and if you log throttle angle you'll see what he did um, increase the throttle angle drastically and then let out of the clutch to get the car to accelerate and then did his part throttle pull with virtually the same throttle angle throughout the entire pull so throttle angle was 17 18 degrees this pull happened to take about 15 seconds and we have math data from 4.9 Hertz to about 6.2 so instead of getting this area of the math curve on that data log the customer got this area of the math curve so the entire lower portion was missing from the data log and the reason why that's important is if we're dialing in a math curve I have no data below 4.9 Hertz over here on the idle portion his, his car is idling, by, has a couple minutes of idle, it's idling at 1.7 MAF frequency, so that is way down here, okay? So I'm missing this whole portion of the MAF curve because his part throttle pull was done too quickly with too much throttle angle. What we want is just enough throttle to get the car to accelerate, and that keeps the MAF frequency low, that means low throttle angle, don't tip in heavy, and get a nice smooth curve to 5000. Once you've done that, immediately come to a stop and let it idle for a few minutes. It takes a few minutes 
for the O2s to correct the fueling, for it to get out of the um, idle control mode, which is torque source 9, and come down to a nice normal driver demand idle. Once you've done the idle, you can do the wide open throttle. You can do this all in one log like I do on the dyno. You can do two logs. It's completely up to you. So the wide open throttle log is essentially, it is probably the easiest one. You're just going to cruise along at 2000 RPM and then mash the throttle to the floor till you hit red line. In this case, I started at about 2200 and got up to 7500 for this boosted vehicle. That's the easiest log to do. I do not want to see shifting, so don't shift it. It's just one steady pull for wide open throttle. And again, you could do this in one data log, the part throttle idle all in one data log like I have here, or you can do it in two data logs like most customers do. Thank you very much.